Yeah, you should be able to hear me, I think. Um, welcome, let me just get rid of that annoying counter thing. Oops, that one. There we go. Right. Uh, hello. We're coming on ground at Belfast. Um, the stream today will be uh, a little bit different to how we normally do, uh, in that we have a jump inside. The, all the systems are already online. I've got the FMC programmed. Uh, if you want to know how to do this, go ahead. You can check out some of my tutorials on the channel. Um, but that that's about it for now. So we're all ready to go. As I said, the FMC is programmed. Uh, but most importantly today, we'll be checking out the latest version of the Fly-by-Wire development version, which you can tell is if we head into the settings, we can see here we've got throttle defense. Uh, if we hit calibrate, we have to calibrate them. Um, I've already done this, but I'll be publishing a video shortly on uh, on how to do this and what what you need to do. Uh, but for now, as you can see, as I said, APU uh, APU started, FMC is programmed. So let's go ahead uh, and get going. But we're on Ratson um, as normal. So let's get this little tug coming over. There we go. Tug's coming over. That's good to go. Right, that is good. So let's just call cool up on um, V Pilot and let them know. Let, let them know what we're doing. Unicorn, the easy three five half a kilo. Uh, we're on the ground at Belfast City, uh, pushing back, facing uh, east. Apologies, pushing back, facing south from the scans for runway two zero four departure. So you can see the routing today. We're going to push back. Head off zero 04 nicely over the bay, uh, and there'll be a right turn out down south. No controls on lines, so we're heading right up to cruise over 230. But, and uh, once we're in the air, I'll explain you to you some of the stuff that they've been impl they've implemented in the latest version. So our parking brakes are released, uh, and we are good to go. So if we just hit reverse, a bit of a jolt there, and the plane's going back. Uh, I hope you can hear me well enough. It should be quite clear, but it might be a little bit quiet. I might need to turn up a little bit. Apologies. Um, it's just uh, getting a new sound card. It should make it sound much better. So let's just go outside. We're now going to start engine uh, two. So if we select APV. And then with the TCA, I've just uh, engine two start. There we go. I want to hit that to detect. And we turn the tug left. And there we go. You can see we start engine two first because we notice the other saw orange is indicating to us that um, our hydraulics are not pressurized. And there we go; they've just gone green as the hydraulics are now pressurized or pressurizing uh, as we start engine number two. Okay, so there we go; the engines are starting, pushing back. Go nicely around the corner. We'll get engine number two start. Uh, sorry, one started as well. Okay, engine number one starting, set the two cas, uh, and we'll arm the squares. Okay. What I'm going to do is just time it so that we push it back nice and straight onto the line. So if we just um, keep going, I've just got to time this so that we push nice and straight back on that line. Probably the first thing, few things you'll be noticing with the new development mod is that we can see we've got a nice new uh, artificial horizon, which is much more realistic to how the AP20 actually has it. Let's just get the tug and set the parking brake. Engine number one is starting. If you just give me a minute, I'm just going to close. There we go, there, there, close. Okay, so. Push back, we'll just let the engines rev up. So we've got engine number two is stable, engine number one though is not quite stable yet, so we'll keep letting that rev up. There we go, percentage is getting higher and higher and higher. And there we go, it's fine. If you can go to normal, if you bleed, master off, taxi lights on. And we're good to go. Just close down this, and there we go. Should run it just a little bit smoother now. Um, I have quite a lot of programs open at the start. There we go. So here on the bottom right, we can see what we need in the in cat. Uh, sorry, in the what is it? Um, anyway, it's telling us what this, what we need to do. So we've got parking brake on. We want to release that if we want a taxi. 
packs. Okay, so we need to turn the packs one and two off. So we should go here. Okay. And they're off. There we go. Aircraft's got much quieter. And we're good to go. So we'll just cool off on Unicom. Uh, Unicom ET35 half a kilo. Uh, push back now from Belfast. Taxiing via Alpha to Alpha 3. So basically, all the way down to the end. So release the parking brake. Parking brake release. There we go. Gone. And um, now all we're going to do is just let the engine's revs build up a bit. Buy a bit of power. There we go, we're rolling. Bit of power to get us rolling, and we're back off the power. We're going to go downhill along here. And uh, of course, I've forgotten, we need to go flaps too. Let's take off, that's what we're on today. So we go flaps going down to flaps two. We need to set our trim. Just one up. So here we just go. Up. 12.1. There we go. Go on B. Left down the hill. We can see our takeoff inhibit page has come up. And this uh, tells us the rest of what we need to do. So we need to water break the max. Check the cabin. Take off config test. Take off config to normal. Got our flaps down at two for takeoff. And we're heading all the way down to the end of the runway. Quite a short runway at Belfast, uh, so we'll need quite a lot of length to take off from. And it's a fairly long flight today, with a flight time of about an hour and a half, gate to gate. So we'll be in the air for about an hour. Right, so if we slow it down a little bit, and we'll just tell Unicom we're lining up. Belfast City, three five kilo, lining up runway zero four. So there we go, go around the corner, and we're lining up. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me all right, as I always do have a little bit more problems. So if you notice, you might notice you can't turn on the auto throttle with the new version. Um, and now this is the, the realistic TA320. It will automatically come on when you get into the air, automatically arm itself. And then, of course, when you go into climb position, detent, it will activate. Right, which is a handy little feature of the A320, saving you stuff. So there we go, lining up on the runway. So we've just come to a stop here, once we just do our final little takeoff checks. I've just set the parking brake, so we'll go lights on. I should have already done this, but what we can just check is the temperature. 8 degrees, we might need anti-ices after takeoff, but for takeoff we won't be needing them. We can see our V1 speed there, and our VR speed is about 129, so that's our V2 speed. So speeds are good, so we're about ready to roll. So here we go. Parking brake released. We'll just slowly increase the throttle up to 50% so that we can confirm the engines are staying together and we're not going to get huge uh, imbalance of thrust. They are confirmed. Toga. Now our toga power today is only at 82% so we don't have much thrust um, which means we're going to need a little bit more takeoff distance to roll than we normally would. So there we go, we're through 80 knots. Speed's still building. We're 100 knots. today because with the new development update the autopilot uh, works a lot better than it used to so therefore I can actually trust that the auto that uh, managed altitude mode will work uh, very well. So I'm going to pitch the nose down to 15 degrees holding now just to allow the speed to build as we continue our climb. And as you can see we're going to be making our right turn right about now. So we're going to roll it right There we go, even climb. Okay, so we're back. Leaves now in the P. 
flying detent. Keep rolling right. And as we just make this turn now, I'm just going to D R D uh, yeah, D R. Oh, hey, hey, pilot studs. Nice to see you in the chat. There goes, that's one. Uh, it's really exciting actually, the new development update. Uh, it's meant that the autopilot in the original uh, fly-by-wire development, the altitude uh, when set to manage would actually cause you to climb at either a, a huge rate or no rate at all, which is um, very unrealistic. And so this new update has actually meant that the fly-by-wire team can concentrate on building the uh, experimental version. Thank you very much, Pilot Studs. Thanks very much indeed. Goodness, that's not quite set when it's flying to us there. Uh, no, just, uh, it's just probably just needs a calibration. That's, that's it. Right, if we turn the autopilot on. There we go. As I was just saying, um, it means the fly wire team can now focus on making sure the experimental uh, is really good and they're going to fix some stuff such as automatic holds so the aircraft can actually go in a hole by itself uh, and fly a hole which the CRJ by Aerosoft uh, can. Actually the A320 was missing that for a while. I'm not sure when it's going to settle in the climb. There we go, it should be right up a bit. Uh, thanks very much Pilot Stubbs. Donating. Thanks very much. Okay, so just have a look at this small issue. Anyway, we're through 7,000, so we need to go standard pressure through the transition altitude. We'll keep it climbing. Still on altitude simulate. We'll just uh, alert Unicom to what we're doing. So, uh, Unicom is 35 kilo, uh, airborne passing 7,000, climbing up to 230. Uh, Cruising at 270 knots, 623. But, uh, I'll just dial it to 27. We're going to go the way. Just increase the range. We can see we've got we're a slightly weird route in that we're going to head right over Dublin because we hit the Dublin VOR. Um, we'll be high enough by that point to get out of the way. But, um, preferably, I wouldn't have done that. But uh, yeah, if you're on the VFR map, you can have a look. Uh, we're actually heading. Across the east coast of Ireland, down across the Irish Sea, going across Wales, down across uh, into to Jersey. So a nice, 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 not too long flight, but uh, long enough that it's quite nice to get a little bit of so. so there we go, we're through 10,000, we're landing like spot. Oh, we've done seatbelt sensors. Uh, and now we're through, sorry, we're climbing past 10,000, we'll continue up to 27. See, we've got a couple of altitude restrictions. And that at Nunfi, we need to be more than 3,000, um, which is no problem. But it's just for those aircraft that land very slowly. It's just a couple of restrictions. We have a look at the weather radar. The weather radar, just so you know, operates best at a 40 mile range. So if you're 80, you can see when we go further range that actually it starts to not get a little bit less clear. So if we just dial it back down to you can actually see a lot more. Desire is our top of climb marker, which we can see keeps moving uh, with position uh, as, as our speed increases or decreases. Uh, is actually pushing the uh, Which is good because uh, in the development normal we, we didn't actually have that. Uh, whereas now with this new uh, combination of the experimental and development we have it, which is great to see, because it's this fly wire is doing so much to add uh, level of detail to our simulation, which is really, really fun. So, the flaps are up, we can just keep an eye, I'm just going to turn off the flight controls, see the clearance page, we can see fuel use, um, we can see all the information we need to know. If we just have a look at our, if we just get a weather request, 
that section of going on, so when we get to JSON, we know how it works. But general order reverse. There you go. That's been sent. We've got return. We wait a minute. There's a company message to appear up here. Then we're good. There we go. Company message appeared. We hit messages received. And there we go, you can see the init arc has come through there. Hit print, down, and there we go, we're starting to find the letter. So that'll print nicely. If we just uh, head back to the performance page, if we go across to the approach phase, and here we have the information we need to check. So if we click collect, we now got the wins uh, and the Q and H here. So we've got Q and H one zero two two. Type one zero two two. Now we put that in the image box there. The winds are zero eight zero at twenty one, gusting to thirty two. Um, I, I, I didn't quite expect this, but we have got quite a lot of wind at Jersey. Um, I just checked this morning; it's, it's very windy. So we're going to put in the maximum one, which is thirty two, into the wind there. And actually, Jersey's got a very accurate um, ILS. So I'm going to put in a, a, a radio. Because if you remember, um, we used to have MDA and DH, so minimum descent altitude and decision height. Uh, they've been replaced with the NEOs uh, FMC, which has baro and radio. Because in the A320, we do have MDA and DH, but in this, we have um, we have uh, baro and radio. So all you want to do is to calculate decision height. It should normally say on the charts, but it doesn't. Just check your. If I just drag this across, you can see here the elevation above heights above AD is 398. What I tend to look at is the threshold elevation is 271 feet. Add 100 to that, or so that gives you 371, which we can just put in as 371, uh, and then add maybe another 10, so you've got 381 or 1288. So that is our minimum cool out. So we'll go through. 200, we'll get 200 cool out, we'll then hit minimum, so ooh, what's going on here? Okay, let's go, uh, I'll go control and just run the heading across, let's see what we're going where it should be. And I'll just do a quick direct to W. So we've got a couple of patches of weather. Uh, we seem to be going darting right through the wind, which is quite So the new to fly pad, of course, uh, this was introduced a while ago. So if I just explain some of the stuff that the developer, this this new update has added. So when you get it first into the it's into the um, A320, the new version, you might find that actually your throttle, when you move it, doesn't go where it used to. Now, before you do anything, your flight sim settings, uh, you can leave, um, but what it actually is, you need to go to the throttle detents here, in the settings page of the tablet, click calibrate, and then you can see, you've got the values of all that stuff, and you go into each detent, put it to where you want it to be on your throttle, click set from throttle, uh, and you're good. So with mine, I got the reverser on axis, so we got the TCA, which means that my reversers are on the same run, um, as it were. Independent access, uh, independent access. I'm not sure why they've made it so that you have to tick it, but I have two different throttles, so I've ticked that. If I had one, I'd de-tick it. You can see you get a single. Um, and if you had, if you don't have reverser on axis, that's where you idle for us. You then hit a button that goes, you puts you in the reverser mode. Throttled up to get that reverser. Uh, and then the major thing you'll probably notice when you first hop in is that the actual uh, hor uh, um, artificial horizon looks much better than it used to. Obviously, we've got much sharper, sharper textures on it. Um, you'll notice a couple of things when you first start. It says Neo. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive than it used to be. Our roll indicator.
indicator works better because you have slip indicator below this cross air force of where we're going, which is brilliant. So we've got quite a nice tailwind here, 27 knots or so, which is why our ground speed is uh, 440 miles per hour, um, or knots actually. Um, air speed is about 290. If you have any questions, just let me know in the chat. Uh, I'll try and go through as much as possible on studying hard. <laughs> so you can see here we've got a nice fuel usage. If you ever notice that one engine is using more fuel than the other by maybe about 10 kilograms, um, that's probably because you've started. So normally I have engine 2 that's using more fuel than engine 1. But that's of course because I started that engine first. So if we have a look down here, we're going to set up a descent calculator, just so that I know when we should be descending. It'll be a long way soon, but it's nice to sort of set yourself up. So, target altitude, if there's no controllers, we want to, like, you can follow your descent, so if we zoom out a bit. So we've got no altitude restrictions for all these waypoints. Uh, so actually, no, I'm nice and protected. Um, we can descend down to the glide slope cap. Altitude for Jersey, which is 3,000 to be just up there, there. Our descent gradient, I want about 1,600 feet per minute. There we go, that goes in. It's, it's automatically got our speed and the current altitude, so it reckons about 100 miles. Now, this can be a little bit, um, I find it descends a little bit early. So, let's say we should descend about 90 miles away. Zoom out a bit. So if we start descending now, we'd be leveled by ST. So we'd be leveled to start. So we've got a long way to go before we can start descending. Uh, let's just increase speed a little bit. 290 is nice, but we can nice speed. Yeah, it's So if I just bring up the image chart for the arrival into Jersey, we come from Scary on the Jersey One Mike. We come down across the other heading on this heading of 147, down, 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 towards the Guernsey VOR, which we can tune if we want to, which is 1094. If you ever want to tune your frequency, go to your grab node page, put it into VOR on the frequency. So we are 1094, and that goes there. VOR1 frequency, which we, they can then display on here if it's powerful enough, uh, which sadly it is not for this one, but what it'll then, if we leave that displaying, when we get close enough, we'll have a distance to the waypoint. So as we then come, we come from Guernsey, we head down towards the waypoint Shark, in which case if it's busy, we can hold here on this lateral heading, which we would input into the FEC, uh, and it'll do it automatically. And this is what Flyberwire 2 we're trying to implement, as actually we don't currently have that. Uh, the Aerosoft CRJ, which uh, I have bought and will be doing in another stream, and I'm just learning it, it's quite very different to the FE20. Uh, you can do this, you can automatically do a hold, which is nice. Um, what we're going to do is come in from Guernsey, we're going to make a left turn, so I'm hitting the lock, and then we get back here, and go nicely in. Right, if you just give me a minute, I'm just, uh, probably as you're doing, I'm just going to have a quick uh, bit of my breakfast.
back. <laughs> it's a lovely day actually. Um, I'm surprised it's that windy in Guernsey. I'm just going to actually a live, just if you ever want to find out temperature or something, just search in your uh, whatever search files you just search up the METART and then the ICAO code for the airport one. So I'm just literally searching METAR, Echo North JJ, first link. There we go. You can see we've got the temperature, the winds and everything, so it works. The temperature is 10 degrees down in Jersey, which is a little, little bit cold. The transition altitude for Jersey is actually 6,000 feet. It's going to be a full landing configuration if we want to change that. So, if you want to have a flap free landing, just click there. You can go config three and it'll give you all your approach speeds. But now we're going to have a full flap landing today, which means approaching at 136 knots uh, and then touching down at uh, 125 knots, which will be, which is a good sort of touchdown speed. It's nice, you should always read this before you land. Uh, it's quite important that you know the speeds. So the winds are still 080 at 32. Uh, yeah, winds are 20 knot gusting to 32. So actually, I'm going to change it to 30, 21 because that's the steady speed. So we're landing actually on runway 08, which means we're going to have a full headwind um, of that speed, which means we should be able to touch down even slower than that because, of course, we have more air flowing over the wind, so we have more lift. So we're heading over the Irish Sea now, it's looking great. I am actually, I haven't shown you, we are actually making contrails on the EastJet Neo delivery, which is uh, nice. So, if we head back into the flight deck, we can just keep an eye on our descent. I noticed that uh, whilst I was going, it's starting to go up a little bit, um, maybe our speed's slightly bigger, which it is. Um, about 103 miles away, so I think we'll descend 100, which because um, it always overestimates. So we'll be level by ZO. So a while to go still, we've got it all the way down. You can see that VOR still still hasn't quite picked up yet. Uh, hopefully, it will soon. A few other things I just am going to quickly demonstrate. Um, if you ever had the experimental. Uh, fly by wire team didn't provide support for it but now because they've shown that in the experimental it's stable uh, there's no issues with it they have actually taken what was in there and put it into our autopilot and into the development which means we have all the fancy features of the experimentals autopilot so for instance if I want to go down to 260 rather than having to um, Uh, rather than having to go managed or do a vertical speed like I normally would, I can just go selected. Uh, in theory, should normally do it. Yeah, and it'll do an open descent, which means it will descend gently. Whereas if I did a managed, it will descend much faster, as it knows I want to get there. But actually, we want to just have a gentle descent. So this is now just going to gently descend me down to that at a slow 1,000 feet per minute descent rate. So for cruise climbs now, of course, we can actually do that really well. If any of you are in the, um, uh, did, if any of you did, uh, what's it, um, Vats and Cross the Pond yesterday, um, I didn't want to stream that just because I haven't got quite got time, but uh, you'll notice that if you tried it during a cruise climb, which you quite often get across the Atlantic, you could just go selected and let the plane slowly trundle up to that altitude. just told me got a news cruise last year because I went down and came back again. So, if we have a look back at the approach charts, I just want to highlight the attention to this. As we come in, we can see we've got lots of NOTAMs. So we arrived to Scary, head to the Guernsey VOR, then turn right, well on the route you're going to VOR, turn right to 155 heading to Shark, to intercept that Jersey VOR, which is that heading straight onto the runway. So this is the Jersey waypoint, which is situated directly behind the runway. So if your ILS, or when your aircraft doesn't work, if you're not ILS capable, then you can actually tune the Jersey VOR 
then you can just, when you get here, turn to align with that VOR and head straight into the F1. That will give you a, an exact heading. By the, I found though that by the time you get sharp, you tend to have visual on the airports actually. You don't need to head towards this VOR. If I look at the, uh, the ground charts, just having a look at the charts here, we can see we've got the frequencies for the ILS uh, at either end. These are the uh, basic lock tunes. Say I'm coming in on runway 8, I want to tune this one. 026, this one. So, even shorter runway here than at uh, Belfast, actually. Shorter by about 150 meters or so, which means we'll have quite a short landing, hopefully. Um, but uh, we're going to have to exit Alpha 1, I find. So it'd be nice to exit Foxtrot, actually. I find we normally can't make that. So there we go. Still a while to go. I said uh, not too long flight, but uh, fairly long. Uh, right, uh, I'm back in the. And we're back. <laughs> we're here back here. We can see we've got still a while to go. You can, if you want to check your track miles, which is if you follow your uh, predetermined route, the exact number of miles to go to your airfield for your destination, um, rather than just sort of judging by using this uh, this system. If you look down here, where your destination is, you can see an arrival time, which I. That's wrong. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, a distance to go. So I know I've got exactly 255 miles until I hit Jersey Airport um, by following this route that is to get there. There you go, turning across. Just having a look across here, we can see uh, not really much updates to the iPad apart from that calibration feature, uh, which they have to do because uh, with the experimental they changed quite a lot of things. Of course, recently we got the fuel panel update uh, in the EFB, which is the tablet, but uh, they're going to hopefully soon implement the payload features to the, this tablet. Um, hopefully I'll be able to make a video to uh, on you on that um, before it's released. Um, because I recently was allowed to uh, got, get entered into the Flavor QA program, which means I get to test the latest features, but um, I haven't really, I'm a bad tester. <laughs> I haven't really been doing much, so uh, we'll, have, we'll have to up our game a bit. But um, yeah, so uh, hopefully, and then of course we have recently had the, I'm sure Pilot Stud, if he's in the chat, will tell you about the nice new A3, A38X, I believe it is, features coming. Uh, that'll still be a while, but uh, we've had a couple of new updates recently in the fly by wire discord. So if you've noticed I haven't put the st normal pillow pilot logos and things in the cockpit just because I literally updated this this morning to have a look at what was going on. Wow. It's quite busy on Unicom today. If we just drag across here we can see uh, we we haven't got anyone online actually for Jersey. Of course we've got, we got uh, who's this? We've got um Birmingham ground on. 
as the normal extra pack control because that is a training center for vatsim uh, for, for pilots on vatsim um, in the uk which and, and so is manchester that's why we are always very busy at manchester i, I haven't actually flown on the stream before but um it's very very busy so yeah watch out for that so we're going to head south in a minute for the rest of our turn you can see there we've picked up the guernsey vor see the line across to where the vor is uh, and there we go it said 190 miles to go um, which is great um, shows this feature works really well uh, and it used to just do this in this development but with the new combination you can see we've got a nice arrow pointing towards the VOR which is a lot better than it used to be if we head to VOR mode uh, oh, I need to put in a course uh, what's the course? I think it's so you have to put in a course to this but um, let's say, I don't know, 180 let's put that in there into CRS put in CRS you can then see it's going to try and align me with that VOR heading of course the heading isn't I think it's one five zero. So if we put that in, that can make it better. Okay. One five zero into the course box, and there we go. You can see we've just overshot what it would reckon would be heading straight to the VOR. Of course, it relies on what heading you put in, but um, that is the basic gist of it. Um, once we've uh, hit um, the, the Guernsey VOR, we then just head south to head towards Shark which is not a VOR, it's just a waypoint, which means it doesn't have a frequency we can tune. Uh, only some points, like STU, we're heading over here. Um, this is, I believe, this is the VOR that just gone over. Yeah, any, on your um, flight management, or what is it, nav navigation display, ND, any waypoints that are marked with the cross in sort of purple um, are VORs that you can tune. So here, Bravo Hotel Delta. Is that big and pale? I know it's not. Um, I'm not sure quite what it is, but you can actually tune that, uh, and that will give you an exact course towards that. So about 170 or so miles to run. We can see the fuel used is still going, but going up. We're getting through the fuel left. If we just go onto the fuel panel, we can check how much fuel we've actually got left. So we've got 1600 in both tanks, a bit, bit more in this tank than this tank, uh, because the APU, which it handily says here, feeds off this left hand tank. You can see it's a lot lower in this tank because it's been feeding off that. Go to our hydraulics page, they haven't actually implemented that yet, which is a shame. It would be great if they did. Of course, we've got loads of pages though that work fantastic. We've got the bleed air, the APU, the conditioning page, the engines page too many to name but it's brilliant and actually if we so if you want to find one you just click on it but then if you want to go back to the automatic sequencing page which is it will automatically go to whatever page it thinks you need to the right time just click on it again and it sort of the light goes off and you can do whatever you want let's get another meter report just an updated one just so you can check again the weather and make sure we got the accurate weather uh, for what's going to happen there we go so sent again go back, get the company message. Another feature I want to say is free text. You can put in the call sign of any aircraft um, that is using the fly-by-wire mod uh, and do it. So to find your aircraft number you just go here, FLT NBR, so mine is EZY35PK, of kilo. If I then head back to that free text, I can send a message to myself. Um, you can send it to anyone else. So say there's a friend you have flying uh, and you and you know he's flying you can just send a message to him so it works really well um, it's weird that it actually works to yourself but uh, you just put in their number there and you can type whatever you want into any of these rows so hi send that there we go it's been sent we head back you then go to messages received and there we go you can see it will come up here and if you can actually print it um, it's a nice message I guess <laughs> So if we head to the meter, we don't need to print this one off if it's the same. Same. The winds seem to have settled down a bit, actually. It seems that it's no longer gusting. It just sat at 21 knots um, of headwind. Okay, it's 1022. Everything's the same. I'm not going to print that off because we don't actually need to. On the performance page, we can see cruise 
So say you wanted to, you knew you were going to be cruising slightly faster. So currently, what we're going to do 320. If I had planned for that, I just put 320 on my selected there, and the aircraft, as soon as you turn to selected, would automatically send to 320, and it can start to make some judgments of fuel um, fuel usage for your for, for that consumption. So just gone across Wales there. Looking lovely as always. Just checking the over panel, making sure I've got everything that should be on and everything that shouldn't be is off. <laughs> Again, we've got some poor weather if we just zoom in a bit to our left, which uh, luckily look, we're just sort of going through the middle of this weather. That is getting closer though, so we keep going fast and get through the middle of this. I didn't really say yeah, thanks very much for that donation flight stud. Um sorry, I just did just take my phone always a bit hectic and stuff. So if you have put your company name in in the company tab, which is your sim brief username, you can then hit from sim brief and it'll give you your routing, your takeoff time you put in sim brief, your uh, 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 schedules of arrival time, and that is gate to gate. So that's when we push back. I, I thought we'd make it a push back then at that point. Uh, this is when our arrival time will be. Only thing that might be annoying, as I have noticed, is this is flickering. And that's actually with the new update, I've noticed that flickering. Um, haven't normally noticed it before, so that is uh, a little bit odd. I'm not quite sure why it's going on. But anyway, it, it moves as you move, which is really healthy. You can see exactly where you're going. It's quite a detailed map. If I zoom out a bit, we can actually turn on the weather radar. So this senses you on it button, I don't know, one of them turns on the weather radar, <laughs> you can actually see where the patches of weather are on the map, right? uh, where will this go, oh, uh, that zoom out feature is not working, ah, maybe it's not, oh yeah, there you go, we've got a bit of weather, it's not recognising the weather near us, but uh, you can see it tells you where the rain is and stuff, which is a really great feature, it's just a bit of fun, Oh, I didn't know you could do this, what's this, what's this? So if I just go like that, we know what we are. What's this? Is that do anything to the plane? No. Okay. That's really quite interesting. Look at that. <laughs> I've made a little... Ah, it gives you the distance and the course between these two points. If I shift key and click to delete, so... Press control to go up to resume. If I just click there, that's, does that delete it? Oh, yep. Now I think you just go control. So you can draw a line. That tell you how far you've got to go. That's very helpful. I like that a lot. I'm just going to shift and click so that get rid of it. There we go. Yeah, nice little feature actually. Um, still a while to go. If we just zoom out a bit, I just want to make sure we don't miss the descent um, point. So, just checking if we need anti ice. T t total air temperature is very low. Um, now an interesting little thing, we're producing contrails uh, and the minimum temperature for contrails to be produced uh, is, is minus 45 so this sat right on the edge of, of um, the temperature needed for contrails which is um, it's very, uh, I'm very impressed that the simulator actually added contrails. Uh, hopefully in their next update it would be nice if they added um, 
smoke for the wheels on touchdown that would make some cinematic films that uh, people do just look at are absolutely amazing so there we go on that map you can see we're just heading over Wollacoon and continuing on down to Exeter so this should give you a night this uh, actually gives you the Q and H the winds and the temperature and the humidity um, at your arrival airport site. Instead of searching a meter, you could just look on your tablet, and it'll give you the current exactly current meter. Ah, I did not know that. I should have been paying attention to that. Here's our max speed. So we're going 0.7, uh, which is 0 0.76, 0 0.77. That's what we're doing. So a uh, standard cruise speed for an A320 is 0.76. That is the normal cruise speed that uh, your Mac your Mac should be for an A320 Neo. Um, of course, 737s are things so, that you know they do 0.8 and so on, but uh, they actually burn more fuel. So this is still one of the most efficient planes. So we're going actually slightly fast. Uh, uh, what's cons a high max a high cruise speed is uh, considered a 0.8 Mac Mac 0.8 or higher, which is quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, the A320 actually, compared to some planes, is, is, is actually quite slow. I mean, well, you know, when we look at the ground, we're still at, at really, really flying along, which is great. Okay, so just checking the fuel again, we're almost through 1,000 kilograms burned fuel. And we have to start considering descending soon. So, I'm going to ascend to 3,000, sort of level by Guernsey, probably. Um, so then, going across down from Guernsey towards Shark, I've actually made a mistake because it's in 2,000. So, we should probably start going down to 3,000 about now so that we can be level by Guernsey, which we know is about 104 miles away. So, if we go down, I'm just going to wind this down, level to there. I want a vertical speed on this, so I'm just going to go there and hit the vertical speed engage, and there we go, that's going in. Now we should get a point of descent marker come on the navigation display. Uh, I don't know if they've implemented that yet, but um, that, that's what should actually be happening. They're not, which is not a problem, but uh, interesting, I, I thought they'd implemented that. So it's actually quite impressive how early we're descending. We're going to be descending right across the English Channel to get down there. A couple of facts about Jersey. Uh, of course, it was conquered during the war. Um, the Nazis captured it during the war. Um, and they actually built a, a base on the island uh, with a shorter version of the runway we know today. Uh, it was then lengthened um, after it was liberated. It was then length they lengthened the runway to the 1,800 meter we know today. Uh, and of course, still now they're continuing to try and lengthen the runway so that larger aircraft can get in. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fairly busy airport. It's got a nice terminal, uh, but no nothing too major. I'm just having a look at this weather radar here again. We've got heavy clouding off to our right, which we can actually see. If we have a look, we can actually see we've got heavy weather from the huge cloud formations. So okay, the plane's rolling right to continue following this course. It's a bit of a steep roll, actually. And what you can now do is, as you're descending, go back to performance, hit sync, it'll give you an exact descent rate, and it'll tell you a more accurate... Um, does anybody really know what, what runway is he landing on? Turn right. Ah, there's a bit of confusion at, um, at Dublin. So if I just drag up B flight, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to... Because this is a call that we need to make, but then again, oh, I've got to spell the right way. Um, I should probably type it like that. <laughs> um, um, that we need to make, but then again, it's not necessary to call it up. Um, we're just going to type it in. So let's say we're what we well, let's say we're passing two five zero close close enough. Enter. There we go, so that's just then complying with the rules, but in a way that doesn't sort of disturb people. I mean, 
I quite often get told to stop saying stuff on Unicom, or I quite often get also told to say more on Unicom. So actually, I think it's, I don't know what's better. Um, quite often chat everyone gets, but then they say when you're speaking, text-only players don't get it, which, you know, I think on that's and when there should be controllers, which sadly there wasn't actually, it'd be nice if there was a limb control, I was hoping one would come on. But um, on that's and when everything's done by voice, I think we should be really speaking in voice on Unicom. But um, not today, uh, not at the moment, which is alright. So you can see we're still on standard pressure here, but if you have a look at this little gadget here, we can see the actual Q&H, which is 1031, and that's the that's the Q&H outside currently. Um, which is a helpful little gadget if you just know, so that if in real life, I, well, for the simulator we just hit B, um, and that gives us a an exact Q&H for our surroundings. But um, if you didn't know that, then actually, if we didn't have that in real life, then we would um, tune it to whatever this one reckoned. Or what we were given in the ATIS, we actually would achieve. So we can just check again here. 67 miles will be down. We know that 74 miles away is the Guernsey VOR. So we're going to be level a little bit early, uh, which is not a bad thing. But um, we're going to be slightly, slightly. Uh, we're going to be level slightly earlier. I'm back, apologies for that. It's about 80 miles to run to the actual airport, 67 to get to that Guernsey VOR. And we can see we're continuing to come down, so what I'm going to do is go to manage speed so that we just slow down um, to a lower speed. Hi, hey, Pig of the Feather, nice to see you around. How are you doing? I'm just going to turn off 90 hours speed just in case it's bad. Yeah, nice to see you around. Um, hello, welcome to the stream. I'm just going to let that speed drop off so that we're level 290 or so. Um, so that we're closer to the 250, which I need. Uh, this started at 10 o'clock. Uh, just an early morning stream. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm going to go manual brakes for landing, so I'm not going to actually use auto brake because... Uh, I find it quite often stops me on the runway. Um, yeah, no, no worries. You, you're here actually probably for the exciting part, which is landing, uh, rather than just, we've just been cruising the whole time. So actually, yeah, there's um, no worries. You're here for the exciting bit of the of the, uh, of the stream. So about f 48 miles or so will be down. So we're going to be down a little bit early. So I'm just going to decrease that descent rate by uh, down to about 1,400 feet per minute. Descent rate's not as much. No ant no ice is detected so far, which is quite nice because normally in Max Flight Sim we get a huge amount of ice on. So we get out of the cloud, we should be able to see some of the islands ahead of us. Um, they, they stand out quite well, Alderney and Guernsey. They stand, they stand out quite well. Jersey's a bit more tucked in, it's sort of surrounded by this uh, landmass. Okay, so there we go, we can see it there, we can see that's, that's Guernsey there, almost straight ahead of us, but not quite, because we have to make a slight left turn towards it. That's Guernsey, uh, and there's Jersey actually there, that's Jersey behind us, we can, we can see the airports now. Visibility is quite good, I'm just going to turn down the brightnesses a bit as we come through the clouds. Get some lighting on. Let's get the dome lights on so it's nice and bright. Okay, so we're still coming, we'll keep descending down to that 3,000 feet. I'm just keeping an eye on that vertical speed to make sure we don't descend too early, but at the right point, not too late either. So we want to be 
45 miles now, so we'll be down pretty much exactly on the, the Jersey VOR, uh, sorry, the Guernsey VOR, which is um, exactly where we want to be, because then of course we'll head down to 2000 from there, but I just got to make sure that actually we descend not too early, but at the right time. So the mic quality in this video is, um, I'll just touch upon it quickly, is it's sounding good hopefully, uh, but it's a little bit quiet. Um, Streamlabs OBS won't let me turn it up any further, which is it's a little bit annoying. Um, so a couple of changes hopefully in the future, which will make it sound better. Right, we're still going down, only about 60 miles to go. To 90 knots. We need to be 250 when we pass through 10,000. So I'll just get the lights on. Just look through 10,000 and have our lights on. And there we go. When we hit scary, we're then into the approach procedures for Jersey. As you can see, scary is the start of the SID. A star, sorry, into the ILS. So when we hit scary, we're, 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 um, we have to then start following. So what we want to know, what we know is that when we hit scary, we want to be going on a heading towards the Guernsey of 147 degrees. So we can just check if the um, FMC is, is accurate enough or if our navigation is accurate enough. Uh, as we know by the charts, we should be in for 35 miles till we're down. As I said, it's going to descend us a little bit early as usual, uh, which is nothing too bad, but um, I've noticed the iPad quite often does that. So we can see we've got Nice clear weather apparently around Guernsey, even though there's a 20 knot wind, apparently. <laughs> um, so we can turn off the weather radar, uh, we can turn on the terrain display instead, so we can actually see the islands as they emerge. So what I'm going to do is just go manual speed, dial it down to 250, because the manual speed does a great job, it will slow you down to 250, but it will slow you down to 250 as you're through 10,000. Um, which by that point you should be at 250 knots. So I'm going to do it manually because uh, otherwise it, uh, we're too fast. So we're just going to tell Jersey traffic where we are. So um, Jersey traffic uh, is just 35 Papa Kilo, just passing the waypoint scary now to enter the Jersey 1 mic arrival. So now they know where we are, what star we're on, uh, and wh where we're coming into. So there we go, speed is coming down to 250, which is exactly how we want it to be. A little bit to go, it reckons 27 miles till we're down, which would be perfect, we'd be right over Guernsey at that point. Again, I'm going to turn my seatbelt signs as we go through 10,000s. Seatbelt's on. It's a bit of chop on the ocean, but looking very clear. Very nice. Yeah, so we'll keep descending. We've got we'll keep the weather radar off, and uh, we've got predictive wind shear on uh, auto. Um, sadly, that's currently inoperative uh, in the fly-by-wire, but it's it's nice to it's nice to switch it anyway. So through ten thousand now, we'll turn on our ILS display so that we have the information display for the ILS. That won't um, get picked up until you're about thirty miles away, so it's still a little bit too far, but. Uh, the idea is that you turn that on so that you're aware of where the ILS is in relation to you. Make sure all our lights are on. We could probably turn anti-ice on as we won't need it and we need the extra power because of course anti-ice takes heat from the engines uh, to use for the anti-icing. And so we want to make sure that we turn them off probably for landing. So on takeoff, if you're going to have your anti-ice on, you have to uh, ca calculate it. Um, or the aircraft has to know that so that um, it, it can ass assume your speeds. Uh, you can use dis um, you can use departure calculators for this, uh, but uh, I, I I don't. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference as long as you make sure you put all your information in properly or do a sim brief request. It should do everything properly. Ah, thanks very much, 36 subscriber. Welcome to the welcome to the channel. 36, yeah, we're, we're growing, aren't we? We're hopefully, we're getting bigger. <laughs> 26 miles to that VOR. That 
19 miles till we get there. Not too far, not too far. Um, yeah, so, keep descending. We've got the terrain display on, so that we'll actually see the islands, it's quite cool. But, uh, there, thanks very much for subscribing. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Just keep growing this channel. Um, as I say, I can't, I'll try and keep up the tutorial videos coming out. It takes me a while to make them, so um, I have to keep spend some time getting them out. Wow, it's quite it's, bu it's quite busy around uh, Heathrow. There's a lot of people saying stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, after the stream, if anyone wants to know, I'll be probably hanging around Discord for a bit, so you can come say hi. Uh, I'll be ending it when we get to Jersey uh, Sunday. <laughs> Right, so the weather, I don't know what this 21 knot, but we're only seeing about 9 knots. Which is, um, a lot, not, not quite what we promised. I'm checking the ILS frequency I put in right. Because I, I hope I did, but I don't think I have. Yeah, no, I did. Cool. So that's just taking a while to pick up. Should pick up in a minute. Okay. So. So hours ahead, keep descending. So it's 2,000 feet is the actual capture altitude. So we need to be make sure we're at 2,000 feet by like there, so that we're able. So what we're doing is also I've forgotten we're 6,000 feet now. So we need to set the Q and H to what it is locally, which is 1022. There we go. So I just hit B to do that B on your keyboard. Um, that, that does that. Uh, I'm going to decrease that descent rate a little bit. I don't want to be descending far. I don't want to be descending really early. But I don't want to descend too late at the same time. So keep going down. We've got the radio. That's just showing there. So that is the altitude at which we'll get a minimum school out. Uh, and as if you weren't here, you can just go into performance, put it in there. So I tend to do plus 115 um, onto whatever the altitude above sea level of the airport is. So here at Jersey, it's 271. So I've added 110 onto that. 381. 30 miles to run. Uh, this route may look a little bit weird, but if we zoom in here, what I'm going to do is from Jersey to Guernsey, head direct to Shark, and then from Shark, lo localise and head straight in. Because this, like, looping over the airfield field, in if we when, we, when I showed you the charts earlier, is not what we actually do. So I'm just going to do a quick direct, cut out that little annoying corner. Right, okay, that's all good. I'm just going to turn off these stone lights. They're a bit annoying. <laughs> right, so still coming through 4000. Keep the ascent up. Right, um, so just keeping an eye on it. Uh, we're just going to keep descending now, so I'm just 4,000, still down 3,000, we don't want to be too low though, I've just noticed like, this is quite low, <laughs> maybe we descend a little bit early, we're very low actually, I'm going to level off the plane here, this is just the up one on there, it levels off the plane. So again, as engines you can probably might not be able to hear. I've got to get this mic and so that it, if I get the mic better it means I can turn up the sound so you sh guys should be able to hear. But um, I'm going to turn up the sound so you can hear some stuff happening uh, which might make me a little bit quieter. So that's getting, um, that's going great. So I'm just going to keep it level. There we go. Quickly the ILS has picked up. You can see 27 miles to the airport. 083 is the heading course of the ILS. Uh, what is runway is active at Jersey? Ah, runway 8 is what I've been told by Simbrief, uh, and noticing the winds, I, I would confirm that, as we want a headwind on landing, so um, definitely runway 8, yeah. So 
It's another 4,000 feet. It's, oh, yes, of course, this is the Guernsey Airport. I'm going to head right across that. Not sure why I don't fly into Guernsey, but um, often Jersey's controlled actually over Guernsey. Even though Jersey is Guernsey is actually a very big, it's a very big, quite a big airport. Um, yeah. Right, 20 mile range. Keep the ILS display on. I'll let it descend when we get a little bit closer. I'll put this to 2,000. You just you can just type this in. So we go 2,000. I don't know, one seven six hundred. It's like a nice descent rate. So I reckon it's five miles away. That's when we should descend. But by now it's just sort of we'll just judge it. So um, it reckons we should be two thousand, so five miles away. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it for a while. I'll just keep us at this altitude. So twenty miles away, we need to be doing two two zero knots. Where's my stuff? Gone? Sorry, I just <laughs> lost this piece of paper. Right, so twenty miles away, two two zero knots. Right, we can see. Look, the VOR is flicking around because we just passed over it. So I'm just going to stop displaying that as that's now no longer helpful. Going across, you can see the photogrammetry is actually looking great. We've got a very nice 3D island there. Really realistic. I'm surprised the terrain display, uh, maybe I'll turn it off turn it back on again. I don't know, that, <laughs> that hasn't um, picked up. Normally we get a nice, uh, nice island. So I'm going to slow us down to 220 knots. Slow it down nicely there. And if we see, well we're still on the descent phase. I'm going to activate the approach phase because when we get to shark, uh, I'm going to hold the heading, yeah, it'll do something weird for a minute. But what's, um, when we get to shark we want to turn onto the ILS. If we weren't doing that, I'd probably leave it in descent. But because I know that we want to be turning onto the ILS, I probably want to leave it in this. Put it in uh, approach mode. So slowing down, 15 miles away. We want to be, f um, um, we, want to be we want to be 200 knots uh, and flaps one. You can see the aircraft pitching up a bit. Uh, it's rolling as well. I don't know what it's, uh, it's trying to keep on this line. That's why. So. Fifteen miles coming up from now. Of course, we've got to go around this corner, so it's 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 ten miles there, and it's like five miles there. So yeah, it's it's about fifteen, but uh, that's why I'd recommend if you've got a corner like this, you want to remember it's fifteen miles there, direct cutting across the airport. But we don't quite want that. Right, so I'm gonna let it descend down now. I'm gonna go manage and just let it descend down to three thousand. Um, because we do need to be down at that. So we're going to slow down to 200 knots. We're going to tell like Jersey traffic uh, we're on base. So Jersey traffic uh, is 35 Papa Kilo uh, on base uh, for runway 08. Do you do group flights as well? Uh, not on that side. I haven't, but uh, actually that would be, be quite a good idea. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that actually. Um, I do do quite a lot of multiplayer. Yeah, uh, if you want to get that sim, I've done a little video on it, but. Um, Yes, I yes actually, we should do that, shouldn't we? Do a little bush flight around somewhere. Right, that's slowed down. We've gone flaps uh, one. That's looking great. It's coming down really well. Um, okay, so at this point now we are 12 miles away. We can see the airport off to our left. So we're going to get ready to hit localize button, which is going to turn us onto the localizer. Yeah, got routes in, but don't use too much. Well, you know, um, I think, yeah, a multiplayer flight would be nice, because we don't really have to worry about you know, all the radio procedures and everything for that sim. Um, so I agree, that that would be quite nice. Um, most of my streams are on that sim. Uh, you've probably noticed, if you've been having a look around the channel, that most of them are on that sim. Uh, which, of course, means that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't normally do that. But uh, I think that would be a great idea. So here I'm just going for um, 180 knots, flap 2. And we're pretty much good to go. So we'll hit localize when we get in a minute, when we get slightly closer. So if I go now, it won't quite line us up. It'll turn us far too early. We'll have to make a very sharp turn at the last minute. So 180 knots. 
3,000 feet. Don't know, I haven't done this in a while. Um, anyway, that's t ticking down nine, nine, nine miles or so. We'll get ready to hit that localizer button and let it turn onto the ILS. There we go, it's turning, so we'll hit localizer. And then we'll go on to um, approach mode in a minute. It's turning very early. As I said, see how it's turned us slightly early, so now we've got a later turn. I, I try to make it so that we have at least uh, nine miles or so of, of, of run into the airport, which means I've got to keep an eye out on uh, how early it turns. Um, okay, so eight miles or so, so we're going to slow down to a 160 knots. No flap settings. And we're going to hit approach mode. I've done that a little bit late, but so that we follow that glide slope, which will suddenly get a big nose in a minute as it realises we're above that glide. Or not. Hmm? Are we going to realise? Oops. Okay. Uh, well, that's not realising that. It's like manual. Nose like that. Approach mode. Okay, we'll have to take manual nose that down a bit. There we go. It's realised. Right, six miles. That's annoying that actually that a that actually um that hasn't picked up. I did activate the approach phase, which means we are um it, sh it should be working that we're on the ILS, but it's not. Which means I'm gonna manually nose it down. Just seeing if I change the altitude, maybe that helps it. I don't know. At five miles, we need to slow to 135, which is our final approach speed. Go flaps three. Oof. And gear down. See these pouring here. There we go. Ooh, a little bit of wobble. There we go. Hatch is closed. Three greens. Gear are down. Right. Throttles are idle. Because I've had to make a little sharp descent at the end there. I don't know why it didn't follow that glass though, but I have to do a little bit of testing to see if that's uh, if that's a new thing. Right, there we go. So we're going to arm the spoilers, check the cabin, and we're going to go flaps full in a minute. Yeah, Oof, they've come back. I wonder why that's happened. We've got some weird terrain spikes. Interesting. Uh, that uh, they got rid of that in a previous update, I thought. I'll go fl full flap, as that'll just help slow down speed. See the flap dropping. So I'm on uh, manual autopilot now, but um, not manual thrust, but I'll do that in a minute. But we can see the glide slope coming back into view. Just pitch up slightly, so that we don't go below the glide slope, because of course there's a hill here, so I definitely don't want it to be below the glide slope. But I'm just going to turn up the sound so you can hear the cool outs and noises on touchdown, and then I'll turn it back down once we hit ground. One thousand. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten, five. Right. I've gone uh, manual brakes. We've got the reverses on. We're slowing down through eighty knots. Keep slowing down. I probably could have maybe vacated there. 
Judge Jaffke's three shot off kilo. He landed on the runway when we vacated him right and taxied him to the stacks. So 60 knots reverses off. We'll turn uh, off the turn off lights, landing lights off. Keep it slowing down. We'll get the APU started. So, mask are on. Look above. Are you above me? What the? Am I missing? Oh, sorry, you're testing the 787 uh, and 747. Uh, works because I don't have runner pearls, but I can't taxi the 320. Ah, have you got a bug? Are you finding that you can't taxi with that 320? I'll just turn off the scale bikes. Interesting. Hmm. I haven't encountered that one myself, actually. I find the 787 tends not to work, but um, I, d I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I find the 787 uh, quite traffic, problems with. Speed 0065, uh, direct sharp for an IS approach to runway 08. And Jersey traffic, uh, easy three five five kilo, clear of runway. Yeah, okay. I'm just having a look at that actually. Uh, I'm not sure why you're finding it. Um, it doesn't work very well. That is hmm, interesting. Um, make sure you haven't got rudder pedals. I'm on the TCA for steering on the ground. I don't use my rudder pedals. There's a slider on the side stick. I use that as sort of like a, a tiller, as it were, on the ground. It's assigned to rudder, so you'll see the rudder pedals moving. But uh, I use that as like a tiller. Right. Be on the spoilers. Yeah, I'll come and well, I'll join a VC in Discord uh, in a bit, and we'll I'll have a look at what why that's really not going for you. Right, keep slowing down. I want to go flaps up. I am using the Jersey overview scenery actually for this. Oh, don't worry if you're not on MFS. Uh, F -M -F -M -M -F -S. Uh, I will um go a door. I can still. I'll, I'll have a go myself actually. If you're not quite sure. Um, right, so keep slowing down. I'm going very fast. <laughs> there we go. The flaps are up. Everything is on. Oh, there's an easy jet there. Okay, that's where I was going to go, but we'll go next year. Down left. Keep slowing down, we're going very fast. <laughs> and right. And then we'll just go left from here. Slow down a bit, apply a bit of power. You can see the steering tiller moving. Which looks great. And then we'll let it go in. There we go, idle throttles. Let it roll and stand. Brakes on a bit. Let's slow down. And there we go. Stop. Parking brake on. External power is connected. I forgot to turn that off when we first left. The seatbelts and smoking lights off. Engines one or two. Predictive wind shear off. Go through this little like page. Continue. And there we go. Oh. I'm not, I'm not very well in stand now, am I? <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. We'll get the taxi lights off. I'm not. I haven't really gone very far in there. Um. Okay, that's going to be a little bit of screw. Just only wants to get by us. <laughs> I thought it was the right time. Um. Oh well. Oh well. All right. Thanks very much, everyone, for turning up. Uh, it's great. Uh, I'll probably do a stream soon, hopefully, and then maybe the CRJ. Uh, or the 787, uh, maybe even 747. I haven't flown that in a while. So, um, thanks very much for all coming along. Um, thanks very much to Pilot Stud for donating. Um, have a great one. Thanks very much, guys. See you soon.
Jersey traffic, Logan 215, final 087 miles. 